Hey guys, what's going on? So it's another day, it's another pair of boots. These boots were sent to me to review by my buddy Mario, otherwise known as Boot Reaper on Instagram. This is gonna be a pair of Parkhurst boots and this is a leather that is very near and dear to my heart. This is going to be the Parkhurst Allen boot in gaucho moose hide. That's right. So first time unboxing these, let's check out what's inside the box. So we've got a thank you card from Andrew at Parkhurst. We've got some very nice tissue paper wrapping. We've got a spare set of laces there. And then we have the goods, the gaucho moose. We've got a boot bag, an, another set of laces. So let's take a look at these babies. These are nuts. Gaucho moose has so much coarse grain character going on. It's unlike any leather that I've ever collected personally. And there's a lot going on with it. There's a lot to get into with moose. There's a lot to explore here. So first and foremost, let me read a little bit from the Parkhurst website. So this is gonna be the Allen boot in gaucho moose. The Allen boot features a plain toe pattern accompanied by genuine wild Scandinavian moose leather from the Charles F. Stead tannery. This leather has natural scars, imperfections, and color texture variations as a result of the free range environment from which it comes. These should be expected on any pair, but will vary from pair to pair. This build focuses on enhanced breathability and shock absorption in a more natural way by using more leather components. These components include the following, vegetable tanned bends, leather insole, midsole, welt, heel counters, heel stack, a steel shank, cork filler, 360 degree Goodyear welt construction, Parkhurst lug sole and heel top lift. As the eye goes across the surface of these boots, there is so much to notice with it. Moose is by far just one of the most fascinating leathers. First and foremost, I, I reviewed my Truman boots on the 79 last, this is probably about four or five years ago now, uh, in gaucho moose hide. And unfortunately I sized wrong in those. I got a size nine and there was just too much volume going on on the inside. I tried an insert, it didn't help. I just needed an eight and a half. I'm a nine Brannock. I needed to go down that half size for that particular last. There was a lot of volume, not to mention that particular moose hide was very airy, very lightweight. It wasn't heavily waxed. This, this batch of gaucho moose is much, more heavily waxed compared to my pair. My pair was much more akin to a rough out or a suede in terms of weight and in terms of like feeling it, it, it had a very sort of dry touch to the feel. Not to mention it, it had almost like a chapped feel, like a coarse grained, like a crude granular feel about it. Very, very gritty if you, if you want to think of it like that. This is going to be the same way except there's I feel like there's just a lot more wax applied to the surface of this, though it's still definitely mousse as I look at the surface of it, you know, we could take it panel by panel, but basically um, on the toe vamp, so I'm gonna look at the right boot first. On the toe vamp, what it, what it appears to be, it, it almost looks like sand in the desert, the way the sand forms ripples in the desert. That's the same grain character that the skin of the mousse has, but then, it progresses into this more coarse grained area, as you can see here. It almost has a pebbly appearance, like micro pebbles throughout the whole thing, almost like sand. Yeah, sand is a good way to characterize it. And then it gets more coarse as we get to this quarter here and uh, we come around the back and it gets more into a finer sand grain pattern. And then this quarter here has a lot going on too. We've got a blemish, what looks like right here. Uh, it is unlined. And so the inside feels just as waxy as the outside. The tongue is gonna to be a little bit looser temper compared to the rest of the boot, but that's a good thing. That's what you want. You want the tongue to be a little bit more malleable. And then probably the coolest and most unique thing that I've seen in these boots that I haven't seen in any other boots is they actually use moose hide for the insole. And the right boot in particular has just amazing blemishes on the inside. So bravo to Andrew on that subtle feature. I really like that. So yeah, this gaucho moose is four and a half ounces thick. Let's look at the other boot. Like I said, there's so much geography to these boots because uh, every square inch of it just varies drastically. Yeah, again, so on the left boot on the vamp, we've got what looks like the ripples in the sand all throughout the vamp. 
of the left boot. And then we've got more, more dots, more heavy dots on this side. It's more smooth ripples. And then we come to this quarter, heavy dots, fine sand. The back heel stay here. Looks like it's got a wrinkle here. Some ripples and wrinkles going on there. Yeah, another wrinkle here, possibly scratches. Moose is just, it's so fascinating to look at. And I have a few hunches about this leather because I've collected my fair share of boots in Charles F. Stead leathers. They're one of my favorite tanneries. They really do something special there with everything that they do. They're particularly well known for their suede, but I actually like them more for their ramblers and their mohawk leathers. And speaking of mohawk, these are my Truman boots in Gobi mohawk. And if you can kind of look, you might spot some similarities. Now I'm not talking about the leather itself. Uh, I'm talking about the, the application of dyes and waxes. Uh, when it comes to dyes, I don't think that there's actually any dyes in the gaucho mousse. I could be wrong, but to me, it seems to be like a natural color. I don't think that any pigments are added to this skin. I do think, however, it has been heavily processed and heavily waxed, similar to the Gobi Mohawk. And you can see that in sort of the colorway. They're both sort of, at, at their base, sort of an off-white bone color. And uh, my Trumans in Gaucho Moose were the same way. Yeah, like a bone color. And these actually, yeah, they, they've got a slightly waxy feel and we have the flesh side out, similar to a rough out in a lot of ways, very similar to the Moose. And yeah, I think the colorways are the same because on the low hued areas, they look off white or bone. And in the darker areas, they almost have sort of a brownish, almost a slate gray color going on. It's like an earthy brown, dark dirt color is, is the best way I could sort of describe it. Yeah, like a, like a dirt color. And uh, one thing that I noticed with my gaucho moose, even as I got them dirty, it didn't seem to really alter the appearance all that much. Like, you know, you get mud on your boot, normally it you could tell there's mud on your boot or dirt on your boot, but with the gaucho moose, you can't really tell because it sort of already has that characteristic about it. This is an extremely earthy leather without trying. You know, it just is. It just is that way due to the natural characteristics of the animal, the way it lived its life rough in the wild. And it is on full display here. This animal's wild, crazy life foraging, uh, probably fending off predators, I don't know what sort of uh, threats the Scandinavian elk face in the wild, but I assume life couldn't have been very easy regardless. You compare that to like a cowhide like this, and you know, these cows virtually live a pretty carefree life. They just graze, unless they live on Skinwalker Ranch or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, the gnarliest character on, on this gaucho moose is gonna be the veining on this on this particular panel right here. But the rest of it is is pretty much just like a standard rough out. Really love this uh, Gobi Mohawk. This is really an underrated leather that Truman runs. Let's talk more about this moose. Very exciting. This is gonna be on the new Parkhurst proprietary Lug Commando Soul. And it's got the Parkhurst logo in a recessed relief. Beautiful vegetable tanned leather insole and midsole and heel stacks. Yeah, so we've got a 360 degree split reverse welt. Very well done. Made in Spain, like my buddy Take O at Boot Philosophy says. Honestly, since Andrew switched to making his boots in Spain, he's seen the quality go up, and I have to agree. The quality's definitely gone up since Andrew switched to Made in Spain. Whatever factory he's using is doing a very, very good job. In fact, here are some of my newer Parkhurst boots made in Spain. This is going to be the Elmwood Chelsea. I'm actually so over the moon in love with these Chelsea's from Parkhurst. Yeah, the QC on this is just flawless. This is easily a $600 boot right here for a very low price, $400 range. Incredible quality for what you're getting there. Very good choice on the eyelets here. We've got five antique brass standard eyelets, three speed hooks. So a little bit more about moose leather. Moose leather has the uncanny ability to be supple and strong at the same time. Some people choose this leather because it has a very peculiar feel, surface, and temper. So Nick at Stridewise actually has an article on his website. I will leave a link to that in the description below entitled Pros and Cons of Moose Leather Boots. Moose leather has a long history as material used for boots. They actually started with mucklucks. <laughs> I didn't know that. 
a soft boot constructed for cold weather made from seal, moose, or walrus skin and worn for insulation by indigenous peoples living in Arctic regions. So in this article, he features uh, John Doe shoes and Truman boots. So he lists the pros of this leather as they have a unique look compared to other leathers, a supple feel and durable. Cons are limited quantities of moose leather, moderate to expensive price, too rugged for dressing up. Treat this leather like a suede. Yes, I agree. Use a wire brush. And yeah, I would say the another pro to this leather, and possibly you could look at it as a con as well, but yeah, they kind of just always look uh, dirty, but that's obviously part of the charm, right? That they look rugged from the outset, and uh, this isn't really a leather that you'd want to care for. I personally, you know, a lot of people ask me, oh, how do you treat this leather? How do you condition it, this leather? This is a leather, honestly, I just wouldn't condition at all. Like, don't even think about that for the first five, ten years. Like, if it looks like it's going to start cracking, then okay, use some Smith's Leather Balm or some other deep nourishing agent. But honestly, they're so heavily waxed by the tannery already. The tannery's already done their job in terms of impregnating these leathers with everything they need to basically, basically to stay preserved in the, in the long run. Think of it like, you know, the Egyptian mummies, you know, oh, how did they preserve these skins for so well for so long? Well, it's essentially what the tannery has already done. If you were to leave this on the shelf for a thousand years, as long as it wasn't in direct sunlight, as long as it, it was in, you know, somewhat of an enclosed space, I anticipate it would probably look about the same. It's not going to rot away. You know what I mean? Like, unless you literally bake it in the oven, uh, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't plan on conditioning these. Like I said, so waxy already. Just wear them. Just wear them and forget them. It's kind of like a, kind of like a sneaker. Do you think about conditioning your sneakers? No, not really. Same thing. Just let it, let them ride and see if you can break them. That's my advice with a moose boot. They look dirty. They're meant to get dirty. They're meant to. Part of the appeal is, like Nick at Stridewise says, this isn't a dressy leather. This isn't a leather you're gonna want to polish up. In fact, they'd probably look really bad if you tried to to polish this up. So I would just say don't do it. Take them as they are. Ride them. Don't think too much about it. Just let them be. The moose on its own does just fine out in the elements without any special protections or anything. Its skin is no exception to that. So my advice, take these boots, wear the living crap out of them. Here's a good description. Uh, moose has a soft spongy texture. I think spongy is a good word for it as well. Yeah, it's closer to kudu than I would say than to bovine hide or a horse hide. Definitely soft, definitely sort of chapped, definitely sort of spongy to the feel for sure that means it's going to breathe very well it's going to wick moisture very well and it's going to be lightweight and at the same time as durable as any rough out work boot i think this is a very special leather i highly recommend it anybody who's interested it'll definitely be a showcase piece in your collection so with that i'll shut it down thanks a lot for watching guys what do you think about these boots in gaucho moose leave me your thoughts in the comments below Let's keep the love of moose hide alive. I will see y'all in my next video.